Schmidt, and he is Vice President and CSO, so that's Chief Sustainability Officer? <laughs> yeah, we wish to call it that way. Okay. Uh, uh, science. We're still doing a little science in that field. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Sustainable uh, Green Technologies. He's also uh, Associate Professor of Biotechnology at Miracosta Community College in uh, Oceanside, California. Uh, so you see his PhD in biological chemistry, and uh, he's going to bring his expertise to a very interesting discussion. So let me get this out, Thank you so much. and we'll get over to, all right, now we, yes, we'll see this. It really wants to keep going back to this one. Oops. All right, just going to go to. Yeah, it's hopefully not related to my topic here today. No, no, no. We have, all right, I'm just going to go there. Okay. So let's see, we got Bowdoin Crabtree. Do you think this one's it? I'm not quite sure where you put it. No, nope, not that's that one, not no. not the one. All right, try this well, one. Well, I have, if it comes worse to worse, I have my yeah. USB with me. Let's try this one. That looks. That looks like it. All right, so I let's. I identify, that looks green enough side. for me. All right, and then you. Thank you, you so much, Kathleen. Sure. Uh, thanks for everyone uh, to uh, stay here a little longer. Uh, I know it's usually around lunchtime and people tend to uh, try to think about food. Um, yeah, well, we're looking at a couple of glasses or flasks of um, which some people might say might be the food, not necessarily for us today, but certainly food for our um, uh, cars of the future. So we'll have, uh, as you probably heard now, and I will go a little bit in more detail about the, um, the issue of biofuels. Well, first of all, um, um, I'd like to thank the ACS, as it's, of course, for me, um, um, uh, quite an honor to be um, on this arena and this uh, forum, uh, having done a lot of the classical chemistry in the uh, past 10 years, 15 years, back where I was born and raised in uh, you may wonder where Constance lays. It's certainly not uh, in this culture. I carried in a little bit of the uh, culture from uh, the old continent. So I was born and raised and uh, trained in uh, Germany. And I uh, still have good connections back there, which is certainly uh, of help these days, where it's important to do um, a lot of international collaboration in a time of tremendous challenges we're facing uh, in many fields. And certainly, if it comes down to fuels, I was just pondering on the way here from San Diego. As you see, I live in the uh, San Diego, greater San Diego area. Uh, in um, uh, Escondido, we have a very small startup company. We're uh, around since 2004. Uh, that was a time we, we called our same, uh, ourselves sustainable. Uh, at that time, it was still available um, uh, as a, a address for a website. Uh, today, if you probably would type to uh, call something sustainable, you will have difficulties to uh, 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 find uh, to reserve that name. So we're quite around um, working since, as I mentioned, 2004 with um, um, things related to biofuels. And I will tell you then in a couple of minutes. Uh, we should ask ourselves, first of all, when we started out 2004, uh, first of all, we had to explain what sustainable means. I, I don't think I have to do that anymore. Uh, my previous presenters were very clear on that. It is a very fashionable word uh, these days. Uh, maybe I should explain biofuels. Um, and uh, when I started teaching this course at uh, Miracosta College called Biofuels Production and Analysis, thanks to uh, a very uh, great uh, NSF grant, uh, which Kathleen, will, for those of you interested, uh, can supply you with probably more information. Um, people ask me, so what are biofuels? And students ask me, so, well, you look at one piece of biofuel and you might say, well, it looks like any other fuel. And it looks gooey, yellowish, and uh, you can burn it and it somehow keeps things in motion. You're looking at biodiesel and uh, certainly for me, a word I've always been where I grew up, uh, close by to the birth town of uh, Rudolf Diesel, who uh, invented the uh, diesel engine about 120 years ago. Um, it's uh, certainly a way forward. We have now a prefix, biodiesel, and it is one of the many biofuels you can. Um, we'll go over this in a couple of more um, 
uh, details. And um, I also want to show you two things. First, explain the course, why this biofuels course. We, uh, in, we started out uh, years last year uh, to a pioneer teach that at Miracosta College for the first time. Well, the outline is clear. We, we need to explain, first of all, why do we need biofuels? Uh, if you look at some of the numbers, and I don't want to bore you awfully with that, just, just to give you a little bit of a brief outline uh, for, you know, it's always good to justify yourself why you do certain things in life, why teaching a biofuels course, why uh, being an entrepreneur in the biofuels field. Well, we're looking at the, uh, the numbers. If you look at the uh, American... <laughs> Good, all right. So, um, well, let's um, continue with the, uh, the first slide here, and I want to go over this in, in a second. So if you look at the, uh, uh, the numbers of the current uh, uh, biofuels, uh, in, in this case the fuels dependency we have in the United States, you see we consume about 8.5 million barrels of petroleum oil a day. Uh, I, I'm sorry, we're actually manufacturing, producing, and at the same time we're um, consuming currently about 20 million barrels, which is about 840 million gallons, just to uh, put this in a perspective. Uh, most of us are not familiar with barrels. Uh, a barrel usually has about uh, 42 or 43 gallons. So that's an enormous amount of um, oil, petroleum oil, uh, most of that goes into transportation, uh, into fuels production, diesel and gasoline. Um, so certainly, why biofuels? Why thinking about biofuels? We have a deficit uh, in, we have a demand uh, to fill. Well, currently we have to import that at a more and more costly, on the more and more costly conditions from overseas. I just show you some of the uh, currently main uh, oil producers in the world, Saudi Arabia, Russia, and we're third, uh, with about eight million barrels. So we're certainly importing more and more of the petroleum, um, petroleum oil. Uh, it brings, of course, uh, trade deficits, and uh, as we all know, we're currently paying about $100, 103 I believe it was, uh, this morning uh, on the market. Um, why, why biofuel? So that's one of the reasons, certainly, to think about national security and uh, make sure we have an energy portfolio of diversification. If you look at the U.S. energy bill, which was signed in 2007, which uh, mandates 36 billions of gallons uh, of fuels to come from biofuels in about 2000, in about 20 years from now. So teaching at a college, I think, uh, we need to, if that is going to be the future, we should train, we should teach for the future. Um, that's, um, sure you might say that's 20 years from now, but as you know, we'll have um, uh, already biofuels produced. Now we'll come back to that in a couple of minutes. Uh, so why biofuels? States petroleum, if you just focus on California right now, uh, that's the most recent um, uh, graphic I've seen in the newspaper, the source is the uh, California Energy Commission. As you see, we, even in California, we have our domestic oil production declining and we have um, a quite significant increase in importing foreign petroleum, uh, which certainly creates again a uh, tremendous demand for alternatives, fuel alternatives, if, we, if you do not want to continue uh, importing uh, more and more expensive and more costly uh, petroleum oil from other sources, uh, uh, non-domestic sources. So California imports more than currently 45% of its petroleum oil from foreign sources. So why biofuels? Well, political reasons, incentives, we should consider um, uh, as, uh, as we ask ourselves that question. So uh, former California Governor Schwarzenegger uh, issued the S0606 executive order, it's not a law, but 20% of biofuels used in the state from state sources should, should come from state sources in 2010. And then these are a couple of uh, numbers. 
which came out of Sacramento at that time, how much we can adhere to these numbers. Uh, only time will, turn, time will tell and our commitment in the future to remain on that trajectory.